All right, let's get right to it. Tuesday, December 7th, about 2 p.m. Thanks for joining me. Uh, we're going to touch just a little bit on today's snow. Most importantly, of course, we're going to be looking forward to, towards later this week and early this weekend, and more specifically between about oh, 9 a.m. Friday and midnight Friday. Okay, that's going to be the timing as of right now for this, which is going to prove to be probably a significant winter storm over portions of southern Minnesota and western Wisconsin. Okay, what you're seeing now, I'd love to show you Twin Cities radar, but it's down right now. So we'll look at the regional uh, shot. This is a composite of all the radars from around the upper Midwest. And here you go. There's the snow now starting to move out of the Rochester area. Pretty much the snow is done for now, except for a few flurries over Mankato up the Minnesota River to the Twin Cities metro. Snow should the light snow should be coming to an end in Eau Claire and the Rochester area here shortly. And uh, you know, a little surprising. I was expecting a coating to two inches of snow for the most part. That's what we've received over the southern oh third or half of Minnesota. But there is an area now. This was the NAM computer model guidance prediction for snow totals. And the NAM was expecting an area of about two inches of snow near Mankato or just north of Mankato and all the way up to near Scott and Dakota counties. What actually appears to have happened now is that an area of two inches plus of snow developed uh, just north of the Mankato area, maybe St. Peter, and then extended east into uh, Scott and Dakota counties, especially the southern end of those counties. Uh, and then all the way down to the Rochester Metro. So the Highway 12 corridor here um, did receive uh, some snow here. Where's that Highway 14 corridor? Anyway, from uh, Rochester to uh, Owatonna, that area received uh, snow. So, and it was in an excess of two inches. So the two inch triggers down there actually came true, which isn't that much of a surprise. With the cold air in place, even though it's dry, the lower levels of our atmosphere are dry. But boy, this cold air is very efficient at producing snow, and that's what we had today. Okay, looking ahead, here we go. This is the jet stream, and we're going to put it into motion here now, and watch what happens now as we go through time. Of course, here's the uh, disturbance now moving out of the region, and then uh, we get into a southwest flow. It's going to be a warmer, milder flow, so on Thursday, it's going to be rather warm for this time of the year. You can see the jet stream on Thursdays right overhead, but watch what happens as we get into Friday. There's that buckle in the jet stream, and we've got a classic setup here. It's what we call a comma head that's setting up over the upper Midwest and Great Lakes as we go in to Friday. And usually right at the base of this comma head is where heavy snows like to develop. So that would be right in this area here. Okay, now this is the European computer model guidance. Keep that in mind, okay? Most of the other guidances are very similar with the upper air structure. Okay, but I'm gonna show you where the swaths are snow, of snow are located and it's going to kind of surprise you on, on what these models are doing. Now, here's an, what's this kind of uh, meteorology 101, but this is important for you guys to understand. Usually in the strongest areas of wind, what we call the jet streak, usually within that area of wind is where a dry slot happens or occurs. So there is going to be a dry slot that's going to be surging northeast out of Texas and towards southern Wisconsin. And it's on the edge of that dry slot. The northwestern edge is usually where the snow starts to develop. And it, then it usually extends back to the north and west, okay? Keep that in mind because right now, the strongest jet stream winds are from about Omaha to Des Moines to near Green Bay, okay? You, you draw that line right there anywhere along and south of that line and southeast of that line, in theory, should not get much snow because of a dry slot. To the northwest of that line, there should be significant snow. This is the European guidance for total snow expectations as we go in to Friday and then Saturday morning. Check this out. All right, remember that Des Moines to Green Bay line right here. Okay, well, the European guidance has the heavy snows just to the northwest of that dry surge that's going to be coming into southern Iowa. Now, let's put the GFS guidance up there for their snow expectations. And you can see subtle difference, but it's a big difference. The GFS 
has that dry slot moving just a little bit further north. So it now has the heavy snow extending from O near the Mankato area and then extending east and northeast to the Eau Claire area. So, and let's go back to the European guidance again. So the GFS guidance had the heavy snow axis from Mankato to about Eau Claire. The European guidance is about what, 50, 60 miles further south and east through the Rochester Metro and then continuing east to near Wausau, Wisconsin. Subtle difference, but a huge difference. Long story short, and I think we're, I'm pretty sure about this, there's going to be a significant snow gradient somewhere in southern and eastern Minnesota and northwestern Wisconsin. My gut feeling, because it always happens this way, as you know, my gut feeling is that that snow gradient is going to set up right over the Twin Cities metro, and you'll get some totals in the southeastern metro in that five, six, seven inch range, and the northwest metro may almost get skunked by this storm system. Hence the reason why, and I sent you this travel impact map, hence the reason why I have a high impact area just to the southeast of the core Twin Cities Metro, and then a moderate or problems extending further northwest into the Twin Cities Metro. Because I do think most, if not all, the Metro is going to get some snow out of this, but I think there will be about a four to six inch snow gradient from northwest to southeast across the Twin Cities Metro. And of course, if this changes, if this uh, track of this storm moves even 30 to 50 miles further northwest, it's gonna make a huge difference. So we are gonna be monitoring and we need to monitor computer model guidance uh, over the next 48 to 72 hours to see what track all the guidance hones in on. All right, last map I wanted to show you this is now the 850 millibar temperatures. These are temperatures at about three to 5,000 feet. Actually, I'm sorry, it's the 700 millibar temperatures. Here you go. So this would be at about 10 to 15,000 feet. This is important. Now this is the, uh, what do we got? The GFS computer model guidance, okay? And look, we're, what we look for at 700 millibars are temperatures in between the nine degrees below Celsius to about 12 below Celsius. Okay, and as we get into Friday morning, and I know this is getting technical, but it's critical. As we get into Friday morning when the snow is going to start to commence, the GFS has that oh, minus 8, minus 9 to minus 12 isotherms right over southeastern South Dakota and then extending it into the Twin Cities metro and much of southern Minnesota and then continuing east and northeast to a near Eau Claire. And if we put this in motion just a little bit, you'll see it moves that line just a little bit further southeast. It sags it a little bit further southeast so that the important zone, temperature zone at 700 millibars is going to be located right here on the GFS computer model guidance. And of course, here's the Twin Cities Metro. So that's why the GFS has pulled the snow band a little bit further northwest than the European guidance. Now, if we look at the European guidance, and I think it's worth putting this up here for you. It's a good learning tool too, by the way. If we put the, the European computer model guidance up, watch what, what it does here as we go through time now. Here's the storm system now developing over Iowa, and it has that minus 8 to minus 12 isotherms just a little bit further southeast, basically from Albert Lee, um, northeast into the Rochester metro, and then continuing to nearer just south of Eau Claire. So that's the difference. Again, it's only 30 to 50 miles difference, but it's making a huge impact on where this heavy band of snow is going to fall. But again, good thing to look at at 700 millibars is where is that minus 8 to minus 12 isotherm located, because that's where we get a great dendrite growth zone fancy word, but a dendrite growth zone, it basically just means that's where the best and most efficient snow making layer in our atmosphere is going to be located. And yes, it puts it squarely on much of southern Minnesota and western Wisconsin, all the models do, as we get into uh, Friday. All right, here is your trigger graph just updated here. And uh, Thursday, you know, I'm not that concerned about Thursday. We may have just a touch of, of freezing rain even on Thursday morning. We'll see with a temperature in the mid to upper 20s, 
just a touch of freeze rain, maybe even a brief spit of snow. But look, our temperatures warm to near or above 40 as we go through the day on Thursday. So it'll quickly melt during the morning hours, anything that does fall. And then here it is. Confidence is really high in significant snow, especially from Twin Cities International Airport on south and east. And it's not often that I have the four inch trigger. Here it is. I'm pretty confident that there's going to be some areas, even in the southern Twin Cities metro that, that reach the four inch trigger as we go in through the day Friday. One more time, timing looks to be from about 9 a.m. Friday to midnight Friday. Of course, we'll have a little bit of snow even before, probably after, but that's going to be the biggest time for the impact of the storm system. And then look at this. We warm well into the 40s by early next week. I was looking at one guidance. Well, actually, a couple of the guidances were showing highs in the 50s for next Wednesday. Okay, so, and especially for areas that don't have a snowpack. So anyway, lots going on. Uh, oh, and here's one more little uh, nugget for you, a little teaser. As we get into later next week, another massive storm system may develop over the central plains. We'll see what that does long ways away, but we are in an active weather pattern. That's the screaming message here. All right. Thank you for joining me. Take care. We'll update you tomorrow on uh, the late week storm. Bye-bye.